Hello, you have stumbled onto another episode of Get Your Fill, Financial Independence and Long Life, where we strive for ways to achieve those two goals and we invite our friends on to help us. And this week, I'm so excited that my my friend and mentor, Ann McNeil, will be our guest. And she, I actually just returned from a fantastic two days in Boca, where we in person had our annual meeting and talked about a lot of the things that Ann and I are going to share with you today. So before, and this is just, I want to, I'm introducing her today as my friend and mentor and coach, but Anne has so many hats. I hardly know where to begin, including hard hats, (laughs) but so I'm going to make her complete bio available on the website, getyourfillpodcast.com in case you want to hear about some of her other hats, but Anne, please, you're welcome to share. How would you, how do you most like to be thought of? And thank you for joining us today. Oh, Chris, it is such an honor to be asked to share with you, my friend. I am the master wealth builder, helping entrepreneurs get greater clarity in their highest income producing areas of their business and their life. And Chris, I do that by encouraging everyone, no matter what age, even as you saw at our annual meeting for your life, even the children, everyone must have a written annual report for your life. It doesn't matter what age. We're working on my four-year-old granddaughter right now. What's What's her report looking like? And all we do is put a picture of her on the front and just two or three little things. You know, she likes candy. (laughs) <laughs> okay. She loves for my husband to give her cookies. Ah, uh, but what's the goal you must achieve in order to have the cookie and the candy and a few coins for your penny bank, piggy bank? Yeah. And so it doesn't matter if, if we're four or 40 or 80. To start the year off with the end in mind, and I don't necessarily mean, Chris, the end of the year, I mean the end of your life. Yeah. When you stop and think about the end of your life, what does it look like? And as you know, from our retreat that we host, the end of your life, I like starting with an obituary. Yeah. So if we back into the life, starting with the end in mind, what better way than to say, how would you like to be remembered? Wow. Yeah. And I found that, yeah, I found that so powerful when I did my first annual report, because you do, you you really have to stop and say, what, what do I want people to say about me? What do I want people to think about me? And then you, you have to work backwards because if you want to remember it as, for example, this wonderful philanthropist, then you better make some money that you can give away. (laughs) Well, you know what though, when I'm learning though, Chris, you can make money to give away, but you can also give away yourself. Mm-hmm. And so in doing that, a philanthropist can come in many ways, shapes, and forms. And when you think about Mother Teresa, how much did she give away? Right. When right. you think about Gandhi, how much did he give away? Well, years and years of their lives, for sure. Service. Yeah. The service. key really is service above self. I'm also a Rotarian. Mm-hmm. And as a Rotarian, our motto is service above self. Mm -hmm. And the reason I became a Rotarian, Chris, many, many, many years ago, over 20 years ago, I was, I'm still on this journey. Let's, let's talk to your uh, listeners a little bit about what is your annual report? I like to set it up by saying, imagine if you are a publicly traded corporation Mm -hmm. and your stockholders would determine if they will reinvest in you based upon your quarterly earnings and your annual, you know, your annual report. So your life has departments. Yeah. And those departments, I say, have 10 departments. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual, your family, your finances, your health, your education in terms of, you know, becoming an expert in in your craft, the niche to be rich. But what about your personal and professional development, investing in yourself and your mindset shift in terms of whatever your beliefs are? But what about that business that you use as a vehicle to make that money? 
But what about your recreational goals? It might be art, visiting a museum. It might be just taking a day for yourself. Mm -hmm. What about the civic involvement where you want to serve? And then also finally there's creativity. Yeah. In terms of ideas, creative, we're all creative beings. And one of my favorite books, the other book is entitled um, by Julia Cameron, The Artist's Way. And we've talked about that. Yeah. Awesome book helping you to understand how do you pull up and out your creativity and, and understand how to connect with the creator. This mm -hmm. is not about religion. It's not about, you know, promoting some kind of belief but we all have a spirit. How do you connect creatively with that spirit? And what we're learning, which is a journey, we're learning that the spirit speaks, but oftentimes we're too busy to listen. Yeah. And the listening comes in the quiet, oftentimes early morning, <laughs> you know, and sometimes that I'm learning, it's not a matter of doing anything. It's just a matter of sitting, being quiet, no noise, no music, no movement, and just being in a receptive place to receive. It might be a reflection from the day before, it might be a reflection from years before, but just being open to receive like a funnel, if you will, like a conduit, if you will, and being open for things to flow through you. Mm -hmm. And being in a space where you can capture those ideas, because oftentimes, I don't know about you, Chris, but if I don't capture an idea quickly, it's gone. It's and gone. I'm sitting, I'm saying, okay, I, I was a great. I, I had a great idea in the shower. I had a great idea walking to get the pen. I had a great idea a moment ago and it's gone. Just, yeah. <laughs> gone, just like that. <laughs> and so for each of us, I believe we really have to invest the time to know yourself, to invest in finding how to capture those moments. But those are the departments of our life. And so when you think about the departments of your life as a publicly traded corporation, and every year you must go and give an annual report for your life. Mm -hmm. What does it look like? And so from being on this journey, and of course, you know, I, I wrote this book called How to Start and Run an Effective um, Mastermind Group. And all this information is in there in terms of the process that I use. But you start with your vision for your life, your mission, whatever it is your obituary in terms of understanding what you want. Like you said, how do you want to be remembered? Mm -hmm. What do you want to be known for? And it's not all about the money, even though the money is good, you can give that too, but you can also give your time, you can give your talents, you can give your treasure. Mm -hmm. You can give one or the other or a combination of the three. But when you think about an annual report and you think about each one of those departments, what if you had one goal in each department of those categories mm -hmm. and you had one action plan for each goal and at the end of the year you are going to go before your board of directors uh, i like to call it a tribunal <laughs> and that tribunal is going to determine based upon what you said you were going to do the previous year whether or not you get another 365 days to come into the upcoming year. Because if you didn't do what you said you were going to do, why should we give you another 365 days? Yeah. And Chris, that is what I say to myself. So right at November, I shut the year down. And of course you don't wanna wait until you get to the end of the year. That's why an accountability buddy, a mastermind group of accountability is some way, shape or form, somebody or a group of individuals are holding you accountable for whatever you said. Yeah. And so I've been doing this now, like I said, since 79, 80 and, and really becoming more and more systematized with it because my own report, I track everything, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I literally track everything. And every year I look to go deeper and deeper in what I track. Yeah. So to wrap up the annual report for your life, it starts, we talked about the obituary, your mission, your vision. I like to encourage people to take a photo of yourself. And actually, you know, I, I can see my progression. Now you see I have a new hairstyle. We I saw. love your new hairstyle. <laughs> it's very regal. And, I really, I do love thank it. You, uh, <laughs> thank you. I've earned every strand of this gray hair. <laughs> and I'm so excited about the entire thing being white. <laughs> so wisdom is speaking and I don't want to color her. 
Mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, mess with her because you can't hide it no matter how hard you try. And to really come from a place of authenticity and really come from a place of servanthood, you know, because of the self-confidence exercise we do, I, I journal this. And I got to the point where I said, who cares? Yep. You know, I, this is the new me. And what better way to enter the new year than like this with a new haircut? Yeah. Hello, Lord. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so that annual report would include any kind of vision statement or vision book photos and things like that. And I, what I'm finding though too, Chris, is that the more I do this and I look backwards at where I've come from, and to actually be able to document year after year. I had, uh, I have a call actually right after we finish here with the president of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about how I can help the foundation globally. Wow. And yes, internationally, because I'm a certified coach with Napoleon Hill Foundation. And many years ago in 1979, when I read the book, never envisioned being in the space but every year when i wrote my goals for the upcoming year i wrote a goal for six months one year five years ten years 20 years i literally wrote a 40-year goal that i would like to be in this space wow and here you are and so yes yeah, so they've asked me about being a, a a coach for them which i've done and they've also asked me about being an instructor which i've helped to instruct a number of the people that are getting certified now, of course, on Zoom, it used to be in person. And so now I'm looking to not just give my time and my talent, but I am actually putting the foundation in my trust account. Wow. I am actually investing money. So when I I close my eyes for the last breath, uh, they will be a beneficiary of my estate. Nice. Nice. Because they, you know, just the idea of what Carnegie did, what Napoleon Hill did, what Clement Stone did in just supporting this vision and forming the foundation. I think about all the lives like mine, like yours, that have been changed so phenomenally. You know, Maslow's hierarchy of need tells us that after we have our basic needs met, what else is there? (laughs) (laughs) Keep keep elevating, keep elevating. Absolutely, absolutely. I still live in the same house I did. 30 years ago, like not, not like Warren Buffett, you know, who never. <laughs> but at the end of the day, and when I find it, you know, yes, we've had the million dollar homes, we've had the cars, we've had the travel, we've had all those things. But as we age, I want less space. Yeah, definitely. You no, know, coming yeah. from a home where, you know, on a palatial estate, sitting on two golf courses, you know, the, the whole thing. I tired walking through the house. <laughs> I have to be brutally honest. You, you know, better I tell Ione you start looking for an apartment. <laughs> this is, this is, I'm about, I'm like, years ago when I desired all the material things. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, because these principles, you see, when I read that book, that book and the principles in using that book helped me to get that million dollar home. Ajwa, please, I'm on the line. Thank you. It helped me to get that million dollar home. It helped me to get the car. It helped me to get all of the things five businesses, but then what else? Right. You know, and so I say that to say, how many other people can we help based upon what we know? And so that's why every time I get an opportunity to share this message and these principles, because I know where I was, Chris, when I picked this book up and I have right here, I just finished doing a podcast. When I picked this book some up, use, huh? <laughs> me, that has seen some use. Well, I, but you know what? people don't realize I go through one of these a year, (laughs) but I'm in the book. Think about all the, you know, we do the Monday call. We do the Tuesday call. Then we have the Friday call. Then we have the Saturday call. And so, and then I host, as you know, from black NSA, a number of different, all using the book. book, Right. Well, one of these books. (laughs) (laughs) I won everywhere. And they look like this, but my point (laughs) is that, I think often, and I say this when I share with people, what if I quit, Chris? What if you quit, Chris? Yeah. See, there are people that will only hear your voice, Chris. They're not going to hear my voice. Yeah. 
we have people listen to your podcast that are not doing what they've been called to do. And I believe that it is part of it is because they don't have an annual report for their life where they sit down at least once a year and really look at their life from a different perspective by themselves, like we talked, starting with the end in mind, yeah. starting with that obituary and saying, why am I here? Yeah. You know, after I have my basic needs met and money is not a factor, what do I really want? to have said about me when I'm gone. Yeah. And so that is why I think the annual report for your life is so critically important. And as you know, we're, we're, we're talking about January 30th. Yes. Congratulations on your paid speech. I can say for Chris what Chris cannot say. <laughs> for a phenomenal speaker, presenter, coach, talking about real estate and investing in your life and in your business. You cannot hire any better person than Miss Chris McCarron. So Chris, I can say that I believe that very strongly. I've known you a long time. And I do believe that, that God is calling you to greater things also. And I'm just glad to be a part of that. So thank you very much. That yeah. means a lot. So did you have a question for me? <laughs> uh, well, well, I wanted, I did want to get back to the annual report piece, because yeah. I was also thinking about when you look back, because you know, you're saying people don't accomplish things, right? They, they're not doing what they're called to do. And I think one of the reasons is, I mean, certainly the older I get, time goes by so fast. Yeah. You know, 2020 just was like a, a, you know, when I was at the annual, annual report, I sorry, at the annual meeting this year, I thought, geez, I feel like I was just here. You know? just there. It seemed so like a month quick. ago, but it was yeah. 12 months ago. Yep. And if you're not keeping track and if you're not having goals and you, you know, the, the year just goes by. So looking back, the part of the annual report that you have us do that has you looking back and saying, well, what did I actually accomplish last yes, year? Document it. Yeah, because that's another thing you think. When I did my first one, I started thinking, well, you know, I didn't really do that much. And then because it's broken down into those different yes. areas, yes. it does help to trigger things. And I ended up with like two pages of accomplishments. I thought, oh, wow, that was pretty good. And that gives you, that kind of empowers you even more to give, to do your goals for the current year, because then you're saying, okay, well, look, all I was able to do last year, how can I build on that? And, and because you've put that line in the sand and because you have separated it out into the different areas that allows you that clarity. Well, that, that is exactly why Chris in my own life, that survey you're referring to comes out of my life, every single line of my life. And I share with people that the 10 areas I talked about, <laughs> spiritually, I found that I was so heavenly minded, I was no earthly good. I was so heavenly minded, I was so earthly good. Can you relate to that? So as a result of that, as a result of that, I realized that if I set a goal to at least read something in the spiritual area, but what happened is that I found that I started leaning too far to the left and all I was doing was reading and going to church and reading and going to church, but I really was not actually implementing what I was reading. And so I found that faith without works is dead. Prior to that experience, I found that works without faith is dead. And so together, having them come together helped me to have a greater spiritual relationship between what I was reading and then implementing what I was reading spiritually. Yeah, that's an excellent point. I know the very first time I read Think and Grow Rich, it was, I read it as if it were a fiction book or magazine. He's like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. And, you know, even though he's telling you to do these things, I didn't do anything. I just finished it. Okay, read that book, put it back on the shelf. You know, it just didn't speak to me at that time. Apparently, I was not ready to hear what it had to say. I needed you to say, excuse me, you got to pause on this page and actually do the work. <laughs> exactly. I like that didn't speak to me. Uh, because one of the things I, I share when I coach is 
when I read the book the first time, and thankfully that night of December 31st, thankfully I slowed down and allowed the book to read me. And I'd never done that before, but I've continued to do it after with other books. And like you say, rushing through, but what I'm learning is that, I, you know, I read in different areas. It might just be a part of that book I'm supposed to get. It's okay to put it down. There's yeah. nothing to say I need to get to the end in a week or two. <laughs> and so some books I am literally reading, it takes me years to get to the end of it because I am, I'm allowing it to read me and as a result of that, I can easily be in 30, 40 books in the course of a year in different areas of my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading something spiritually. I'm reading something about finances like we do in our investment club. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I love the Better Investing magazine every month. I really cannot wait until I get that magazine <laughs> to read the personal finance section because it also gives references in books to read. Yeah. I'm reading something about my family I really enjoy reading Seven Habits by Highly, by Highly Effective Families by Stephen Covey, which people are really not familiar with that book. And I think that it's really one of his best works, even though he wrote, you know, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Man, Highly people Effective Manager, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, all of these different. But to me, the one for families is the best. Yeah. It has about 500 references in the back, but it's phenomenal. Wow. And then reading something about my health, such as um, You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty. Oh. and the power of water yeah and just you know so and, and because of the reading it impacts the way i think so now i'm in the habit of drinking 32 ounces before i leave home yeah. every morning you know little things like that it doesn't take a lot right and i, I don't need you know sometimes i can read a paragraph and i'm done i love reading a proverb a day it can be one line it does not have to be the chapter yeah it doesn't have to be the whole verse so those are some little things that, that I do as a part of that annual meeting. But going back to the question you were make, asking about reflecting and going back on the accomplishments. Yeah, I just, uh, well, why, do you, why did you include that piece? Why do you feel that it is so powerful to go back and look at what happened and you know, what, what the pre previous year was what was good and bad because it's both pieces right what of did you course. what your challenges yeah, I, I don't your... know I don't, I don't know about good and bad Chris you know I, I think it was Shakespeare that said that nothing is either good nor bad it is our thinking that makes it so <laughs> that's true <laughs> so it's just things that happen and how do you reflect on those things how do you reimagine them and you know both of us we do a lot of uh, listening to Joseph Rodriguez and how he has an awesome ability to dissect this information and, and help us understand that oftentimes it's the indecision that creates the doubt, yeah. that crystallizes in the fear that stops us. And so I think that when you talk about your accomplishments and in, in this book, Chris, that my workbook, I actually break down the, the days and the weeks because okay. what I started learning is that if I didn't document what the goal was on a daily basis, and then document what I accomplished on a daily, and it doesn't have to be every single day. Sometimes I, I can just reflect the week, but I found that I missed a lot of things. Like you said, when you went back and you said, wow, I, you know, when you go through the survey and you say, you know, I did do that, I did do that. What I started learning, Chris, on this journey is that intention is so powerful. Yeah. What was my intention? Oftentimes I had a goal and intended to achieve a certain goal. I may not have written it down, mm -hmm. but because of reflecting on a daily basis and actually writing the reflection, then when I get to the end of the year, which I don't really wait to the end of the year, but again, you can go backwards on what you reflected in writing. I found that my memory does not serve me <laughs> as well as I would like to, but the documentation is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And as the first black female contract in the state of Florida, I am learning that my business is based on, based on relationships. So when I talk about accomplishments, I had breakfast this morning with a friend 
uh, she's an engineer and she works for one of the largest engineering firms in the United States. I'm an African-American female, she's white American. The relationship that we have has been built over 15, 16, 17 years. And every year we get together just for breakfast once a year. <laughs> and today was that meeting that we got together once a year. And so I say that to talk about the relationship that we have and the impact of that relationship on my business. Okay. Um, so this in the reflection has been very, very powerful for me to help understand how and why reflecting back on relationships and people and just stand connected. Now, if I did not reflect, I would not remember just connect once a year. Like she said today, no, we need to do this twice a year because as we get older, <laughs> so there's so much to get caught up on. Yeah. But just that connection has meant so much to my business because she has connected me with individuals at the highest level in her organization. So now when I take that experience and I look at what it has meant for my business, where is it more important to invest my time? Yeah. And that becomes a part of learning how to sell. So I didn't get to the reading about selling and to all the many facets of whatever it is we do for a living. But are we, unlike Napoleon Hill said in his book, are we specializing in a niche? Or are we known as a generalist? Mm -hmm. So we've heard that you can read 10 books on one area and become an expert. How do we tie that back into your annual report for your life when you look at your accomplishments? So that's Chris, why it was important for me to start tracking. In the beginning, I would just list all the books I read in the course of a year, say 20 or 30 books. Over time, I started taking the 10 categories and saying, okay, these 30 books, which category did they fit in? Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew I was spiritually out of balance. Like you'll <laughs> notice as one of the questions on the survey says, are you spiritually balanced? Are you family balanced? Are you educationally balanced? Every question said, and we know there's really no such thing as balance, but you know, you want to get as close as you could. Yeah. And that question came about, Chris, because when I looked at the 30 books that particular year, I'm going way back now in the eighties, I'd read 30 books. Chris, 20 were spiritual <laughs> and I was broke. <laughs> no no wait 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 no 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 I, I I I was broke Chris I mean real broke real 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 broke and broken but I'd read 20 spiritual books <laughs> so that's why I say I was so heavily minded that was no earthly good but I would not have realized that if I did not reflect yeah. on my accomplishments Ajwa please so when I look at what's happening when I do reflect, right, I'm able now to see if I'm reading 20 books in the spiritual area of my life, how many books did I read on finances? Right. Zero. Right. <laughs> uh, let me see now, how many books did I read dealing with my health? Zero. Let's see now, how many books did I read about um, my family, zero. Now, that's why I think it's important to reflect on the accomplishments. Yeah, absolutely. Because you are, you're not just saying, this is what I've done. You're saying, you know, this is what, the impact of what I've done in yes. a way, right? I mean, that, that's yes. how has this helped me? How has this served me and got me closer to my goals and that? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, you just went on mute. There you go. Thank, um, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, so that's why it's important to reflect and to review and to revise. And also, you know, 
the accomplishments you have had and are having for everyone listening, give yourself a pat on the back. We invest lots of time worrying and being concerned about what's not working. But how often do we really, I call it a date with myself. So every day I have a date with myself. (laughs) And that date with myself includes lots of activities that I do just for me. But one of the activities that I do is I honor myself. I really do honor myself. And I acknowledge some things I did well. And I'm beginning to balance those with the things that I beat myself on about. (laughs) I beat up myself about. And so in the past, it was, I beat up myself 100% of the time and I honor two, no, no, 98 two. And then so slowly I'm coming to where it's not quite 50-50, but I'm honoring myself more on the decisions than dishonoring myself on what I thought. That's why I made the comment about nothing is either good nor bad. It's our thinking that makes us so. So if I made a decision, it was because of my, you know, limiting beliefs about whatever it was. (laughs) And I find, and you're my partner, right? In this, in this discovery, self-discovery and self, self self-confidence. But I'm finding that the more I drill down and recognize those things, the more I can acknowledge them and say, what can I do differently? And what I'm learning is I can speak differently. Here we go to what I say to myself, right? I can speak yes. differently about how I view that. So that's why yes. you're always hearing exactly. from me as your friend. Oh, Chris, no, we're going to change how we say that. <laughs> and amazingly, <laughs> the more we change how we say it, the more we change how we see it. Yes, true. So that's why it's important to, to, to write your accomplishments. Yeah, definitely. So tell us more. I mean, I was fortunate enough to be at the in-person event, but tell us about the virtual event that's coming wow, up on the 30th. Wow, Chris, you know, we have, I've done this event over 20 years face-to-face where we come together and we ask everybody to bring your life in writing. It can be a page, whatever it is. It can be one page or two or three, whatever it is works for you. But because of the times that we're in, what we're finding is everybody could not participate. And because everybody could yeah. not, and respectfully, I made a conscious decision to do it on Zoom virtually. And that would allow many people who could not participate, regardless of the reason, to join us on January the 30th from 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern time on Zoom. And those of your listeners that's interested in participating, you can text the word and A-N-N, you can text and at 55678. That number again, you can text the word and at 55678 and you'll get the registration if you're interested in participating. But you can also go to Eventbrite and it's the uh, McNeil Factor Annual Report for Your Life. But Chris, that event, will be similar to what we've experienced when we were face-to-face, which would be the youth panel. We'll have the youth. That was fantastic. Those kids are so, I still, every so often I just stop and say, man, those kids are just, they were just unbelievable. Well, can you share with your listeners what, what you're talking, because I've done all the talking here. Can you share with them what you experienced both years when you came and you saw those kids? And as you share, I want you to remember this. Think about a nine-year-old Malachi on that stage. Think about a nine-year-old Ioni on that stage. And now Ioni is 31, Malachi is 21. So now just imagine they're living in Think and Grow Rich every single week, every single year. How could their lives be any different? But let me let, me let you go ahead and share what you experienced with our youth masterminders from thinking grow rich yes so there's a group of children and i what are the what's the youngest the youngest is seven seven so children from seven up until some of the mentors are like malachi is in his 20s they every week get together and read a a portion i don't think a whole chapter but a portion Mm -hmm. of think and grow rich and they set their goals and they mastermind they talk about it together and to see these just a small you know, some of the children who are in this group, so mature, up in front of a group of adults, presenting their goals, 
you know, explaining how it works. I mean, it's just, just to see, uh, you know, I think like myself as a, like Jada's little girl at nine years old to stand up there and, and speak like an adult, really. I mean, she comes across with so much confidence and so much clarity and she explains her vision. I have a vision like, and the, the, the little girls whose vision was to have those three little girls. Oh my God. They're so adorable. They had a vision to have a 50 day family vacation and the family was finishing up day 50 because they had figured out, okay, this is the goal. How are we going to make this a reality? Now, they were five years old. Those girls were five. They are just adorable, remarkable. I mean, you just can't as a, as a, you know, an adult who came, who started this journey at age 50 to imagine where you could be if you'd started it at five, six, seven years old and thinking, how could I possibly get my nephew who's 13 to be involved in this and how different life could be for any child who would participate in that mastermind is absolutely life-changing. And you can see the proof of that because Ioni, the baby billionaire, Malachi, international speaker and author at 21 years old. I mean, just these children are so far ahead of the pack, so far ahead of any poor child who is just sitting in front of their, you know, video game and, and not thinking about this and being, having an intentional life. And what am I going to be when I grow up? You know, that's a, just a rhetorical question for most kids, but these kids will tell you what they're going to be when they grow up and they, darn it, they're going to do it because you can see they have not only, they have the tools, they have the self-confidence, they have the clarity, they have the vision. And it's really, it just blew my mind, blew my mind. And I know I'm not the only, everybody in that room was like, man, you know, we're really slouches compared to these kids. <laughs> you know, we all felt a little, a little uh, bad about ourselves after seeing that. I mean, they are unbelievable. Just really. Uh, that just warms my heart, Chris. You know, this is what I was saying about how do you want to be remembered? Yeah. See, and for me, I know what it took for me to struggle through everything that I went through and will go through. But because I know that there are principles, see what the only thing Napoleon Hill did at the request of Andrew Carnegie was to document the success philosophy through principles. Carnegie knew he came from nothing. He worked in the steel mills from age 11, 12, 14 hours a day. And for him to grow to become one of the wealthiest men of his day, he knew that there was a system and a process of principles. And a lot of people don't realize that Carnegie was a staunch Christian. Mm -hmm. And so when Napoleon Hill wrote this book, Thinking Well Rich the Very First Time, Christ was all in it. It didn't sell. <laughs> and and, and uh, he had to really redo the book and a lot of things changed. But he took the words out, but he left the spirit. You can feel the spirit in the words when you read the book and, and the conviction that we each have that, wait a minute, I can have my desire. The work is in what is it that you want? See, one of my other favorite books says that God will give you the desire of your heart. Now that's easy said, but what is it that you really desire? And, and Chris, that's what the first chapter talks about. Yeah. That's what we talk about when we recite the definite, uh, you know, the self-confidence self -confidence formula. formula right? yeah. When we talk about, you know, I know that I have the ability to achieve my definite purpose in life. Wait a minute now, but what is my definite purpose? That's the journey. Yeah. And if we don't know what you desire, you don't know what your purpose is, chances are you're not going to get it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be exact, but have something you desire greater than yourself that will pull you up every morning very early <laughs> <laughs> and and really pull you into action and so that's why for me chris i cannot you know it was said that you know i wouldn't take anything from my journey and that's where i am right now which is why i am so adamant about this whole idea about an annual report for your life i don't care who it is i don't care who hears this Wherever you are in the world, you need to have an annual report for your entire life. 
start with a sentence. I will have blank by blank doing blank. Very simply, that's it. Yeah. And every day, give it some thought. It could just be five minutes. Mm -hmm. But I am very excited, Chris. I'm so honored you asked me to do this. You know, I will make myself available anytime to share with you because you have been such a phenomenal friend in this journey. And I, I have watched your growth in this process. And I have to tell you in front of everybody who's listening, you're a phenomenal spirit. And Thank enduring you. spirit. Yes. But you know how big of a part you played in all of this. You know, Aww. I just had the good fortune to to uh stalk you <laughs> at this meeting and sit next to you and have you turn to me and say, Do you want to be in an investment club? And you know, as as rather than I just made the you know, snap decision. Absolutely. Yes. I want to be on board. No, whatever's wait, happening. Wait, 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 let's dissect that one second. Okay. I, I don't think it was a snap decision. Let me, let me, can I, do you mind if I share? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I, I think that there was something already there, even though we were strangers. See, you already had the desire for something greater in life. Oh yes. And so I believe you drew me to you. Let's, 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 let's hold that one thought one second, because I believe that when your listeners really get it and understand, everything starts with your desire. Yeah. Nobody can go to, to the doctor for you and have your physical. Nobody can sit down and eat your meal. Nobody can take your vitamins for you. And so nobody can give you a desire but you. And once you have a desire and you're very clear, not about how it's going to be achieved, but you're very clear about that which you desire. And see, for you, when we met, you already had a desire. Oh, yeah. That's why I was and, at that meeting. And exactly. I had actually said, funnily enough, the reason I said yes to you so quickly, I mean, aside from the fact that it was a divine inspiration, but I had said to myself that I need to learn about stock investing. Wow. It's about time that I learned about stocks. And then I sit next to you and you say, do you want to be an investment club? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and and let's, let's make sure the public knows we were at a national speakers association, association conference. Yeah. So we were not at an investing conference. No. You see, and you know, I, I can't, I, you know, we could, we could do another, we could do another podcast on this subject. <laughs> It is so powerful. And I really cannot explain how powerful it is. And I look at every area of my life. And this is one of the reasons why right now at this point in my life, approaching 70, I'm so excited. Oh my God. So excited. You look like you're like 35. Oh, I feel like I'm 21. <laughs> All right. But well, anyway, sorry. I look sorry I if look, I age you prematurely. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. So I and, and I look like I'm approaching 50. I don't know. Okay. I don't see a single wrinkle, Anna. I don't okay, see a single 70. wrinkle. Okay. But <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, <laughs> I'm excited because time has allowed me to experience so many things. The struggles, the challenges, the problems. I mean, homelessness. I mean, I, I can go through the litany of things. I don't want to discourage your listeners. But I would I think know, it's just the opposite. <laughs> but I, I know that, that the only thing in addition to the grace of God that pulled me through was having a desire. I wanted to save $1,000 a year in 1979. It took me 10 freaking years, Chris, to get out of debt. 10 years. But what happened to me in that 10-year period of time of forming a mastermind group and meeting with women for every single week, every single Saturday at 7 a.m., rotating each other's homes for 10 straight years and never looking up, but living in this book and so many other books, I then began to realize that that desire grew me into the desire to learn how to. It wasn't about hitting the goal. It was about learning how to. Yeah. Who how you to become on the journey. limiting self-belief, right? Yes. How to yes. have a vision larger than myself, how to achieve something greater than the money. Yeah. And so it took me, like I said, about 10 years to get out of debt. And I, now my desire now is to save a thousand dollars passive, passive, passive a day. Wow. 
passive. Now, when I hit it in my lifetime, it's not the point. The point is the dream has got to be so much larger than the money, which now helps me to understand why it's important to be on all these platforms, to learn about funnels and to learn about the sales process and learn how to sell and to learn how to serve, how to serve. And again, as a Rotarian, service above self and being able to help millions of people all over the world with this message of what these principles can do. I, I'm just excited. So I know we have to wrap up, but I'm excited. I'm so honored you asked me to be here. I'm so and honored anytime. you said yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, listen, Chris, I can never say, I can never say anything but yes. So I'll encourage all of your listeners to join us on Sunday, the 30th of January, 2021 for the virtual meeting on how to create your annual meeting for your life. You can register by texting the word and at 55678, 55678. And you can also go to Eventbrite and the information is there on Eventbrite and McNeil, uh, McNeil Factor annual meeting for your life. And I'll put the okay. link to the Eventbrite on the getyourfillpodcast.com. Oh, It'll be there. And I can't, I can't give you a, the, I give you the most glowing, you know, like I couldn't say there's no reason why anyone should miss this because it will transform you creating that annual report for yourself. It will transform you seeing the youth panel will just, you know, touch your heart and s serve your soul. I just, you, you, there's no reason to miss it, especially now it's virtual. You don't even have to leave your pajamas. You can just yeah. <laughs> absolutely be part of this. So text and to five, five, six, Five five six seven eight. Yes, right. five five six seven eight. And once you send the text, just put the word "and" in the comment section, and you'll get the uh, registration quickly. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. And and uh, the, finally, uh, Chris, you know, it is about the family, yeah. and so that's my focus this year in helping every one of us understand the priorities about the family and having a mission statement for your family and an annual report for your life and your family. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anne, for being with us. And thank Bye. you, listener, for joining us. Be here next week. But first, um, you could be here next Sunday, but on Saturday, you have to be at the annual meeting. Aww. So.